Hello. Welcome to the Earthbound Ancient Cave Randomizer. Oh, we get the unpleasant Gigas intro to start out with. Earthbound. The war against Gigas. I forgot how cool this opening music is, because I always skip it. Hopefully that's not overpowering the microphone. Uh, of course, by Earthbound I mean Tata Boned. So unlike most randomizers I've played, uh, this one is not so much about finding key items in random locations uh, by Ancient Cave. That, that's a reference to, I think, Lufia 2 was the first game to use that term. Uh, but what it does is it turns it into an 8 level or 9 level, depending on how you count, massive dungeon um, made out of all of the locations in the game. They are all shuffled into just a massive sprawling labyrinth. I've done a few of these and I've finished a couple of them, so I do somewhat know what I'm doing here, uh, but there is enough of an element of randomness to hopefully keep it fresh for you and for me. I'm going to go with the fat, fast tech speed. Also I can't find my pop filter for my mic because my, it's been in storage for like over a year. So apologies for any wind or uh, plosives that cause peaks in the audio. Hopefully it's not too obnoxious. If it is, then I will eventually spring for a new, a new pop filter. Um, I figure most of you probably don't care that much. Uh, I don't think there's a big overlap in my audience and audio files, hopefully. Uh, stereo sound, of course. I like sound in, in both ears, separate. Uh, I feel like strawberry flavor today. Oh no! Well, I was hoping for a good mix of sprites for my party. I do have the randomized sprites on. Uh, never seen Zombie Nest before. This is one of the custom sprites, uh, of which there are many, and we may not get all four custom sprites, uh, but we will see plenty of interesting custom sprites during the course of the game. I mean, if he's a zombie, I suppose his name is still Ness. It would be disrespectful to call him, like, Z-Ness or something. Uh, also, I think that's the name of an emulator, probably. Aw, I get a mole in my party. How adorable. Um, well, there's one name that I think of when I think of moles, so... Uh, oh, well, speaking of characters from Super Mario Brothers games, uh, this guy's been in a few Super Mario Brothers games. Uh, no, oops. Uh, do I want to leave his name as as Mari? Nah. I was I was respectful to Ness. I should be respectful to Mario as well. Mario is my friend. Oh. That's it, huh? Just a question mark sprite? Okay, well. That will be your name. Question mark. Name my pet. Uh, King, Peach, Sparky, Rex, Baby, Rover, Misty. Misty's pretty cute. Favorite homemade food. 
Oh wait, is my fourth party member my favorite homemade food? Maybe, maybe I should have named them that. Um, but my favorite food to make at home is tacos. And favorite thing, uh, I have a lot of favorite things. For the purposes of this game, I think I'm just going to go with laser. Uh, lasers are cool. They allow you to read compact discs and other forms of optical media. Um, they make your eyesight better. What, what's not to love about lasers? Well, that looks like a pretty good party. Um, yes, I am sure. So, you, all, you always start off in Ness's room here, just like the actual beginning of Earthbound. There's not much to do here. You can't even come back and rest or rest or anything. So you start out with all four characters. Uh, they all have the same number of hit points and psi points. Nobody starts off with any equipment except for Ness, who starts with a cracked bat. Uh, you have a few items of dubious levels of usefulness. Uh, I think everyone starts out with the same stats. Yeah, Ness has a higher offense because he has a weapon, but otherwise it's all flat. Uh, Ness starts out with no magic. The character who is normally Paula starts out with Psy Freeze. And the character who is normally... I always call him Kato because that is the second don't care option in, in the naming menu. And I don't want to have a character name, named Pooh in my party. Uh, so the character that's normally Kato is... Uh, you know, starts off with some pretty good magic here, but only... Only 10... Uh, PP. So I can only cast one uh, side freeze level two. Huh. I don't know if I've looked at these side descriptions in a while. Does does the base game give you that much like that level of detail? I do check these descriptions because I can never remember which healing spell level heals which ailments. Uh, I didn't know it told you like explicitly how much damage it does though. That's pretty cool. Uh, if you look at the ATM card or use the help option, uh, it gives you a little bit of information about the randomizer. Uh, this is available at earthbound.app. And you can use it right in a web browser, no download required. There is the seed and flag information if you want to play along at home. Uh, I'm using mostly the default flags for the ancient cave mode. Uh, I did change a few of the cosmetic, uh, you know, little cosmetic things. Uh, I disabled some stuff and I enabled some other stuff. I enabled the fully randomized uh, custom music option. Uh, in addition to custom sprites, there are an, a number of of uh, custom pieces of music in the game, which means I may end up hitting a copyright match for uh, the melody of a song, which is uh, not cool. I, I uploaded some, some test footage of this game, and the music was a 14th century, 14th or 15th century Italian folk song. I forget the name of it at the moment. And uh, I got a copyright match for that, for the melody of a five or six hundred year old song. So that is fun. That's not a thing. That should happen. 
but uh, YouTube is YouTube, so we will deal with these problems as best we can. I've been rambling for 10 minutes. I'm sorry. Uh, I haven't done this in a while, so, you know, please bear with me. Be patient while I, while I shake the rust off. Um, before I start, I would like to, uh, you know, say Earthbound is a great game. Uh, if you haven't played it and you intend to play it at some point, I highly recommend doing that before watching this, uh, because if you haven't seen Earthbound or played it, the, uh, the randomizer will spoil a lot of the cool moments. Uh, spoil both in the sense that you will see it out of context, and because it's a randomizer, it won't make any sense. Um, I recently finished Earthbound, the vanilla game, for the first time just a couple years ago, uh, and I really enjoyed it. Uh, I think it's become my third favorite SNES RPG, which is pretty good because the SNES had a lot of RPGs. Um, you can also go watch a playthrough of the vanilla game because it is just really charming and the story is cool and uh, I recommend it. Um, Deceased Crab just did a full playthrough of Vanilla Earthbound and he also did a randomizer run which is which is how I learned about this. Uh, so yeah that's that's one way of checking out Earthbound. Um, but if you don't care, or, or if you played it, or if you don't uh, plan to play it, then uh, feel free to watch and or play along. Um, let's go, as the kids say these days. Oh, okay. This is some good music to start with. Is this Megalovania? I know it's from Earthbound. I don't know the, the tracks well enough to... Oh, it's sort of a remix of, Meg of Megalovania with one of the Earthbound tracks. I, I think this is Megalovania. That's kind of weird. Also, the custom music will cause some strange, strangeness with the sound effects. Um, oh, Flutterby. I don't need any magic, but it's bad luck to pass up a butterfly, a magic butterfly. Also, this game has kind of a lot of flashing images, so if you're sensitive to that sort of thing, just be aware. I hope my audio levels are okay. Uh, I did do a test recording, um, but the thing about the custom music is that the volume levels are not normalized, uh, so some, some tracks are louder than others. So if this ends up being too loud, I really apologize. I'm looking at the, at the levels in OBS and it seems okay, uh, but it's always hard to tell until until you actually see the playback. Is, is this Ness as a dragon? Well, I better find Liar Exaggerate then. Hey man, I'm a zombie, okay? I have more important things to worry about cleanliness wise than my hat. Oh, this is Jeff as a dragon? I've never, I've never seen the dragon sprites before. I wonder if that's a new addition. All of the NPC sprites are also shuffled around. And, and the text is shuffled. So, so far, uh, it's just been a linear path. You, you always start in Ness's room. And once you leave, the area, areas you enter could be anything. Like, I could walk through the store and be through the entire world map for uh, Dinosaur Land. I'm 
not a huge fan of these sound effects. Uh, so the, the music is different for every level. So once we, once we get through level one, uh, we will get a different choice of music, which will also affect the sound effects differently. Hi. Oh. Yeah, the Lost Underworld. Or, as I like to call it, Dinosaur Land. Because that's what it is. Alright, let's fight a snake. Let's, let's get in a battle in this RPG. Oh, you start with a teddy bear, which is nice. And we get some standard earthbound music for the battle here. The first few enemies that I encounter should be pretty easy. Although it is possible to run into enemies that are out of your depth, and it's also possible to find treasure which is out of your depth. So it's it's uh, a lot of very exciting possibilities. Non-metallic crow. Dang, Monty and Mario doing some damage already, without weapons. And by damage, I mean more than one. So crows always drop some sort of item. Uh, in the base game, they always drop cookies. Let's see what I get from this crow. A stag beetle. I forget what that even does. I think you like throw it at a monster to like stun it or something. Yeah, the enemy is shocked and stop, stops moving and, and that's the one time you sight them. So one of the problems with original Earthbound that carries over to this game is that it likes to fill your inventory up with garbage. Um, I, I don't use the consumable items so much because there's typically magic for that and everyone has a uh, fairly limited inventory space like Ness always has to carry around the soundstone and the ATM card so that that limits his inventory space by two automatically and you only get two three you, you only get like 12 item slots um, but the randomizer adds a feature that makes it easy to discard the last piece of trash that you just picked up. You just uh, press the right shoulder button and you get a little whistle sound effect. Sorry, I, I've been playing a different RPG so I'm going to have to get used to the controls of Earthbound again. Uh, but yeah, I, now the stag beetle is gone and I don't have to worry about that filling up my inventory for actually useful items. This this remix isn't as good good as I was hoping it would be. Uh, I, I don't feel like it meshes super well. I mean, I guess I'm looking for Venus's house. Oh, so this is the first. Uh, your sanctuary location. The goal of Vanilla Earthbound is to find all of these uh, and get powered up by them at the end of the game. Oh, that's a lot sadder when Ness is a zombie. Oh no, he's reminiscing about his life as, as a happy human kid. So there's one of these, or 
there's one of these or another place on each level where you can uh, get a full revive. Um, when, when you, whenever you go to a, your sanctuary location, it completely refills all of your health and magic points. I, I'm probably going to call it magic instead of psionic or psi, I'm sorry. Um, and I didn't actually know that this effect was repeatable because in vanilla Earthbound, these locations are usually located at the end of a path. And once you get there, you know, you always get one of these after defeating a boss. Uh, you don't really have a reason to ever go back there. Uh, so the fact that these do the full heal, and it revives your entire party, which is, which is very important in this game. Because the only the only ways to revive party members are at a hospital or with an item or one of those locations, and there are a couple uh, a couple places besides the your sanctuary locations where uh, where you you get the full revive. But it's pretty uh, they're they're few and far between, so. Uh, it's very good to remember where where these are because when you get a full party wipe, only uh, Ness or the primary character is revived. Uh, you know, it's it's not game over. It's kind of like Dragon Quest in that respect. I, th I think you lose half your money and uh, you are revived at wherever the last time you saved your game was. But the rest of your party is dead, and you have to figure out a way to get them back. And that can potentially be a game-ending thing if that happens in uh, in an inopportune place. I guess I can start using some magic on on these crows to try to kill them a little bit more quickly. Okay, they are pretty susceptible to to ice. I also randomized the uh, intrinsic abilities of the party members, which is the default option. Uh, so Monty has Spy, whereas normally the character that Mario is replacing, Jeff, is the one who has, who has Spy. And this lets you see some information about the ability. But when you randomize them, it, it, it makes them a lot more useful, which I will demonstrate now. So Mario has Prey, which is normally the ability that Monty would have, or Paula. And then uh, Question Mark or Kato has, has Mirror, and that's as in the base game. Ow. Those were my eyes. I don't really use Prey. Um, offense five. Okay. Oh, so it does give me the the chance to like slow down and read these. That's good. Um, but a prey can have unpredictable effects. Um, it can heal your party. It can revive a character. In my experience, it usually just makes everybody start crying, which isn't super useful. So I don't use that that much. Um, but yeah, in the base game, it doesn't actually show the percentage of vulnerability to different, uh, different attacks, or di different, you know, elements. Uh, at least I don't think it does. Yeah, I, I don't think it shows information about that at all. Uh, so, so you know what spells work against what enemies if you, if you use spy. So it's a lot more useful than in the base game. These crows are extremely susceptible to magic. Wow. And, and it also shows you how likely you, you are to be able to mirror them. So mirror is an intrinsic ability that normally Kato has, where uh, you lose control of him for the duration of the battle, but he takes on the, uh, the form of an enemy that you're fighting which can be useful and it can not be useful um but knowing how likely it is to work makes it you know significantly more useful oh, i forgot you could steal steal items by doing that too that, that's kind of funny 
All right. I pr I'll probably have to use magic to finish off this crow because crying is like it it, uh, it affects your ability to hit. Yeah, like the the Dragon Quest equivalent would be like surround. Um, so I will have question mark use uh, use just a basic free spell. And if you're not familiar with Earthbound, the teddy bear basically takes hits on the character's behalf. Uh, it's sort of like a shield. No spells. Alright, let's toss that stag beetle. Uh, yeah, let's fight another crow. Why the heck not? Okay, so I can kill the crow in a full round of basic attacks, that's good. Got a fire spell, that's useful. Toss that stag beetle. I don't like how the sprite randomizer mixes up NPC and enemy sprites. Because I'm wondering like... Is that an actual scorpion, or is it an NPC uh, with the appearance of a scorpion? These things might might do some damage to me. There's they're slightly more more of a threat than than the crows. Five damage to the teddy bear. Good job, Mario. I mean, you did barely more damage with a crit than Ness does with with the bat swing, but still, good job. Guardian Pogoist. I feel like someone who uses a pogo stick and takes it very seriously. Oh my god. That was a lot of damage to my Mario. I mean, I do have a full revive not far away, so I'm not super worried. But, uh, I like to take care of my friends. Uh, let's see. How do you feel about being frozen? Are you on board with it? Yeah. I think the Pogoist enjoyed that. Hypnosis. That's a good one to have. That's basically a sleep spell. But yeah, like I was saying, uh... Like, this is just an NPC, but you don't always know that. It's like, is that a real scorpion? It is possible to see enemies that are, you know, over level for you. Um, I don't have guts anymore. I'm a zombie. They've probably become all putrid. Here's a question mark taking a nap. Oh, that's the... I think that was a mailbox, and then this is the bus stop sign. Yeah, the, the bus doesn't work in the in the randomizer, because how could it? You know, there's no r rhyme or reason to the way the areas are connected. So here's one of those out-of-depth enemies I was, I was talking about. L luckily, this one is optional, so I don't have to fight that thing just yet. Um, that's a bad sound. That's uh, Liar Exaggerate, who is married to Locke from Final Fantasy VI. 
I, th I think they make a, a cute couple. Oh, I'm sorry. That's that's the Runaway Five Tour bus, of course. Oh, it's the mayor. Oh, do I get something for talking to him? Of course. Okay, I don't think that's something I've gotten in any randomizer before. Uh, so, key items are... Uh, they are for opening shortcuts. So if I, if I see the Traveling Entertainer Shack, now that I have the key to it and I can open it, um, that would take me to a different level of the dungeon. And, and that's the same for all, all key items. Um, I usually have, uh, Kato, or a question mark, carry around the key items, since he, he doesn't have a whole lot else to carry. Um, this ruler can be a key item at some point in the game, so I'll, I'll give that to question mark. Uh, and I think that's all I have. The protractor does nothing, so I will drop that. Um, okay, and I think I'm, uh, I'm going to call it here. Uh, I'm going to try to keep these episodes to about half an hour, sort of like classic LP style. Um, ideally, I would like to finish a dungeon in, in each episode, but with the amount of talking that I'm doing, that is clearly not going to be, be possible. Uh, so, uh, tune in tomorrow for the next episode of the Earthbound Ancient Cave Randomizer. Thanks for watching. Goodbye.